Finally, the situation with Violet having been averted and but not excused, we can now get back to the contents of that diary. We are coming to the end, and as we get closer and closer, I seem to be feeling the stress of knowing we will soon have the answers we are all coming to look for. Why do I feel the sensation of dread instead of the anticipation of finality? That child has now revealed herself to Edmund as well as myself. She seems to be wanting to get closer and closer to who we are, and I still don't understand why. I begin to work on the divorce papers right away. Now, I'll sit down with Violet in the next few days, and I'll get all the details ironed out for her. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Underhill. We really do appreciate that. Uh, could you please start that search to get all that information we asked you for? We'd really like to know what we're facing sooner rather than later. Understood. But I'd like to remind y'all, after the behavior I saw of Bernard in my office the other day, I don't think we've seen the last of any trouble that boy is capable of. He's just one piece of bad news after another. Well, we'll just have to handle that as it comes at us, one at a time. That's true. Say, how y'all coming along reading into that diary Everett left for you? Getting pretty close to the end of it. Is that right? We got so caught up in the thing that we pretty much decided that we want to keep Willowmere after all. Mr. Underhill, did you know I was named after Philip's son? Well, yes, I did. I see. Mr. Underhill, have you read this diary? Yes, I have. Everett wanted me to be sure to understand everything there is about this place so I can handle things best for him. Mm -hmm. Now, when y'all get through to the end of reading that, just give me a call, I'll come on out, and I'll let you know whatever I want you to know after that. You mean there's more? Just give me a call, I'll come on down, and we'll finish her up. What is next? There's no sense borrowing worry until it gets you. Listen, Wes, uh, there's something I got to tell you. What's that, Evan? I don't know how to say this, but last night after you and Louisa went up and C and I were sitting here alone, well, um... Oh, please! Don't tell me you think you've seen the ghost of that little girl again! I, I saw her, at Wesley, just as plain as I'm looking at you now. She, she was all dressed in white and dancing through the fields just as pretty as a picture. With everything else that's going on around here, now I gotta worry about having you and Celia committed? What is going on with this family? <laughs> Hi, Violet, dear. How you doing today? Oh, I've been better. Mm -hmm. But, now that I got everything out and y'all know what's going on, I have to say, I feel like I lost a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. oh, you know, I know I got a long road ahead of me before I am rid of that parasite. But, at least I know that I'm going to find some relief thanks to y'all. And hang over or not, that's got me feeling pretty good right about now. We ready to continue reading with the diary? Well, the... Tell you the truth, Celia. We was thinking about maybe taking a step back from it and catching up on the goings on around here. Oh no, not on my account, please. Uh, it's just the same to you. I'd like to get back to it. I'd like to take my mind off of other things. Are you sure, Father? Oh. You heard the woman. Just open the book and read. Please, Edmund. Go on, honey. All right. <laughs> Let's see where we were. April sixteenth. 1777. I have not made an entry in this diary for some time now, as I have been taken up with much work to keep our beautiful plantation home running. It has proven much more difficult to take care of usual affairs, as I must do many things more covertly. Our money and foodstuffs are continually being confiscated by British troops, and if I am not careful to conceal a large portion of it, we will be left with very little to survive on. One of my neighbors, a loyalist to the British, has branded me a sympathizer to the cause of the revolution. And though they have not been able to prove that standing, I and my family are being watched very closely. March 21st, 1778. 
It would seem that the war has taken a large turn in favor of the colonial cause in the North. As a result, the British have turned their attention to those of us in the South in hopes of shoring up the loyalist factions here and regrouping. However, those fighting here for the cause have taken to their new form of warfare quite well, and they continue to confound the British, as well as their Hessian cohorts. The British continue to march in form, wearing those bright red coats of theirs, and the Patriots just hide in the brush and pick them off one by one. April 12th, 1778. Constance and I have managed to secretly assist the Patriot militia by helping them with provisions and even giving them protection by hiding them in the root cellar when British troops are in the area. Yet with it all, Constance and I are so very happy in our life together here, and the children are in remarkable health. Wesley just turned seven years of age this past January, and he continues to show fine strength of character. Constance has been having some difficulty keeping him focused on his studies, however. <laughs> he would much rather be outside than fighting all the trees with that sword of his in order to single-handedly win the war. But her skills as a teacher have stood her well. She somehow manages to regiment to time spent with the books in the library here at Willowmere. Eve is becoming quite the young lady. She is approaching 14 years of age this August. And every time I look at her, I can see her mother's smile and her mother's poise and elegance as she often continues with her favorite pastime, dancing and singing through the fields. Eloise was truly an unusual beauty, and Eve certainly is her mirror image. I love my Constance with all my heart, but I must admit, every time I look at my beautiful little Eve, the memory of Eloise comes rushing back and my heartstrings can sometimes tear me apart. Wesley, if something ever happened to me, would you marry another woman? Now, who do you suppose could take your place? You're the love of my life. I know, but Philip felt that way about Eloise when she died. But it seems to me it didn't take him very long before he married Constance. Louisa, um... But out, Edmund, I want to hear Wesley's answer. Wesley, by now all the women in this county know that you've come into a big part of Uncle Everett's inheritance, and if I wasn't here, I think they'd be looking at you long and hard. Uh, um... <clears throat> well... <laughs> well, I suppose they'd be looking at me, uh, you know, uh... Do you think it's only because of my money? Wesley, don't do it. Because so I'll have you know that there are a lot of women that look at me, even when we didn't have two nickels to rub together. Well, what women, Wesley? Tell me, what women are we talking about? Um. Hmm? Women? Which well, one? you see, uh, uh, the, the thing is, is that I was a happily married man, so I just blew them all off right away, honey. I, I, well, I don't even remember. apparently not, because you seem to remember them all very, very clearly right then. But that's only because you brought it up, Sugar Bridges, and I, and I, and I... If it's all the same to you, I have had it up to here with marital problems. And I would like to get back to the diary, if that's okay. We're just about done with it, and I can't wait to see how it ends. Yeah, go on, Edmund, save me. Yeah. What? <laughs> what a novel idea. <clears throat> May 21st, 1778. The Hessians came through here today and took all our livestock to feed their troops. Knowing they were on their way here, we managed to hide my prize horse, a few cows, the old sow, and a few chickens in the root cellar that is hidden in the back of the house. What things we were able to begin harvesting early, Constance and Eve have already put up and concealed in the root cellar in preparation for winter. It is getting harder and harder to placate their greed. But my most serious concern is the safety of Constance and the children. The last time they came through here, Wesley came rushing out of the house, sword in hand, and, and began striking out with a vengeance. It is very fortunate that they found his behavior to be no more than the amusing act of a boy at play, and simply made light of it. 
June 19, 1778. We have instructed the children that they must not wander any further than 100 feet from the house at all times. And if they see or hear any British soldiers, they are to immediately run inside or to the safety of the root cellar. Wesley has been told that from here on in, he must abandon his sword and take cover so as to help protect his mother and sister in more concealed places. I think this approach has managed to make my wishes clear to him so that he will obey my instructions. That and the firm hand he received after his previous reckless actions in warfare. <laughs> Just who is it who prematurely got the idea in their head to cut a piece of my fresh apple pie. <laughs> Wesley Hammond, that pie was meant for everybody to share after lunch. Now, on account of that, you ain't getting no more pie. You had your piece, and now you're going to have to watch while everybody else has theirs. Because there ain't no more pie. And that's that. Now, y'all better get yourselves into the table for lunch, because it's ready, and I'm in no mood to fool around. You just cannot seem to stay out of your own way today, big brother. That woman can't stop me from eating any more of that pie. <laughs> well, we can. Y'all already had your piece, and you're not getting any of mine. <laughs> you're not getting any of mine either. Well, I just found out you've been looking at other women, so there's a snowball's chance in hell you're going to have any of my pie. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry. Come on, let's go eat. <laughs> Sounds good. I finally feel like I could eat huh. something. I really hate this family. <laughs> well, it looks like we're about we're almost done. I can't wait to hear how this sounds. Keep reading, Edmund. All right, let's see. It's August third, seventeen seventy eight. Well that's today. Oh, so it is. I'm at my wit's end. We cannot find Eve. Oh, my God. She has been missing for hours, and evening is beginning to set in. There are people searching everywhere. We've begun to concentrate on any area that could pose a danger. We've been down to the river and searched the banks thoroughly. We've combed the cliff areas where she might have wandered and perhaps taken a fall. I've checked the root cellar several times, hoping that somehow she found her way in there. So, you're finished. Then you might as well know, this being the anniversary of when it happened, I reckon there'll be no getting any sleep around here tonight. What do you, what do you mean, Adam? I? Well, uh, you're just going to have to wait and see. There's no words to describe it. You just have to wait and see. And stay in the house. You don't want to be outside tonight. Trust me on this. Stay in the house. <laughs> 